Okay, okay. Well, uh, first of all, thank you everybody to be here. Uh, thank you especially to Anurupa and Ranjana to, to be here and, and, and to present uh, what happened in, in India with the, the program in training. And uh, this is a really special meeting. This is a strange meeting. Uh, crossed by the hope that a peaceful solution to this big conflict between Russia and Ukraine could be could be reached very soon. Uh, we hope. We hope. So, well, uh, please, Anurupa, uh, your turn if you want to to start, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here and uh, we start by uh, uh, really, really echoing what you said, Tito, is uh, uh, a lot of our thoughts and prayers are with our colleagues in Ukraine and uh, we hope for a very quick end to this, uh, this horrible situation. Um, and uh, we, we, we will begin with just telling you, we've put together a little presentation because so many different things have happened over the last few years. And in India, a lot of the training that has happened is um, always been informal. And now since 2014, Unima India is trying to go closer to a formalized training system. But we have very particular situation here, very peculiar situation here. As, do, as does every country in the world. Um, there's a very deep cultural historic context. Um, there's also a very large country to reckon with. I'll show you a map. Puppeteers are really scattered across this map. Uh, and um, we are technically uh, thousands of kilometers from each other. So over the years, even the running of UNAMA has been very challenging, interesting, exciting, frustrating. And so running a a training program has been very similar, but it's also been a very hopeful situation uh, because uh, what we had set out to do uh, with bridging the gap between traditional performers and the city living contemporary practitioners is getting bridged more and more every day. Now UNIMA India for the first time since 1986, has a president who comes from a traditional puppet theater form mm. uh, and lives in a village and not in a city. And, uh, you know, is, is, it, this is very unique for our situation. So I will share a little, a little presentation and it's uh, quite informal. It's also just to keep everything in one page. So I will start here. Let me know if at some point in the videos you can't hear something or the slide doesn't change and I will, we begin with our training programs. And uh, everything is okay, it's okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah. as some of you already know this, we have a very special context. We have about a 3000 year old tradition in puppet theater. We are not sure what came first in India. We're not even sure it's 3000 years and not 2,500 years or 2,300 years, <laughs> but we have literary evidence from about 2,000 years ago, and also in the Natya Shastra from 9th century, where there's a reference to puppet theater. Uh, we have a huge debate now about what is tradition. Um, is it just to play with the puppets which look a certain way and you perform a certain story? Uh, and then Ranjana will jump in a little bit and tell you about this. We've had so many discussions about who really is a traditional practitioner because in India, the traditional puppeteer still practices a living form as in that his community still has a space for him, which is not just entertainment or storytelling, but they practice rituals. They, uh, you know, they will come on the, uh, on the 13th day after a person has died to do a very particular puppet show. Uh, they will do shows for the birth of a child. They will do shows for a wedding. So it has a very particular context, a ritual and social context. A lot of puppeteers also work as uh, uh, wise people in the community. They are consulted during the elections. 
Um, so it's many things like that. Uh, plus, we are not really a, now there's a political boundary called India, but actually it's a part of a much bigger Southern Southeast Asian subcontinent, uh, where, which the present political reality doesn't really um, take this into cognizance, which means we have been cut off from a lot of our flow of stories. Um, we have the big metaverse of the Mahabharat and the Ramayan. They still continue to be the most popularly performed shows in uh, the traditional puppet uh, plays. And contemporary puppetry is not so well known. There are not many, not that many practitioners and they remain in cities or bigger towns. Um, and it's only about 50 years old in India. Ranjana, is there anything you wanted to add to this? Unmute myself. Yeah, no, I think you've pretty much uh, covered everything, except that I would like to point out that the contemporary puppeteers are uh, mostly in cities. They are mostly in urban areas, whereas the traditional puppeteers, if you can imagine it, are scattered in the rural communities largely. I think that is the only correction that I would like to give. Um, this is a map of how puppetry is spread. But when you see this map, what is misleading is that it has the entire political boundary of the state. But if I were to point with my cursor, in Uttar Pradesh, the puppeteers would travel somewhere in this region, you know, not in the whole state maybe. But the ones in Rajasthan used to travel all the way here, all the way to the south and come back. Uh, and when we say 18 living traditional forms, they look completely different from each other. And what I will do at the end of the talk is just share a little video where you can see all the different forms and uh, hear the music from them and see the performance uh, from them. So uh, we have five different forms of shadow puppetry. We have three different forms of glove puppets we have three different forms of rod puppets and we have also what is not maybe a full performance but things like noku vidya where the puppeteer is balancing a puppet on the bridge of her nose uh, of the space between the mouth and the nose and just showing um, a lot of uh, simple trick puppets and they don't have a particular story story always but it's very interesting if you see this one Chadar Badar, it's a box with about 12 or 16 little figures and the puppeteer moves a string. Sometimes one of them moves, sometimes all 16 of them dance together. So it's uh, a, more like a illustration of the songs that he is singing. Uh, we also have uh, about 11 string puppet forms, uh, right from the largest, which is one meter uh, high from Andhra Pradesh, called Chikalo, uh, Bombalata or Tolu Bombalata, and the smallest, which is Gopalila here in Orissa, which are just eight inches, um, and, and many, many in between. Some have crosses, some have none. Um, so it's a really, really mixed bag uh, in, in India. Um, and just, just to give you another diversity example, in Kerala, in uh, the Tolpava Kuthu is only performed in the temple, and the temples have official puppet theater spaces. There are 83 such temples in the district of Palghat. But if you go to UP, Gulabu Sitabo is two glove puppets. They're two women and they're always fighting with each other. Sometimes they're sisters, sometimes it's the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. And the puppeteers carry them in a little bag, stop somewhere, do a little show and then go away. So we have the two extremes of extremely classical, patronized by the temple, uh, receiving a lot of funding from the temple and to very simple, often uh, puppeteers who you see only for a season and then they go away and do something else. So for us, creating a vision for a training program in India was uh, a, a big challenge in the beginning. So it had to include the traditional puppeteer from the village, uh, both classical, very elaborate, to the ones who come from not, uh, not so formalized kind of puppet shows, to the urban contemporary artist, 
we also had to look at what job does a puppeteer have because we don't have state puppet theater companies. We do not have people employing puppeteers in a, in a, in a long uh, job capacity in any way. And so we were looking at applied puppetry because a lot of puppeteers in India do uh, uh, work for health propaganda or education. Uh, so the, the, what is called the development sector. Uh, then we were looking at new things like developing narratives uh, where in India it's largely been the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, what new narratives could come in? Uh, what about new techniques of uh, animation? new material other than wood and uh, leather and other traditional material. Um, how about keeping local aesthetic? So all, everything that, that you see locally also comes from the local theater form. So if you see Kathakali in Kerala, you have Pava Kathakali, which is the little doll form of the same thing. Um, but we were looking at how do we uh, bring in this kind of a tradition, which is very contextual, and then also bring in uh, the Western teaching techniques to actually enhance this, not to erase this, but to really enhance this and to look at could new things begin to happen. Uh, so this whole local global combination and uh, looking also very clearly at dramaturgy uh, of the puppet performance, the philosophy of puppet theater and discourses around uh, within the puppetry community, because these are almost missing. I mean, they happen very informally, but not in as layered and a formal way as it ideally should be. Uh, yeah, Ranjana, if there's something else you wanted to. Yeah, I'll just add a little bit and uh, say that, you know, that the training for the traditional puppeteers was always, uh, we call them generational puppeteers because uh, it's, we found that it is a better word when uh, the technique is handed down from one generation to the other. So the younger generation would learn informally at the feet of the elder and would probably start learning while he was still in the womb. And he would begin to listen to the narrative and hear the music even while he was a toddler. And without actually having a formal learning, he would be really inhaling the aesthetics, the music, the narrative and the art, even though he might be going to school and learning whatever syllabus everybody is taught in a school, but when he came home, he was learning puppetry. And this would go on for about 15, 16 years when he would become an assistant to his father and start assisting in performances. It's so informal a system that to teach or to learn for a traditional puppeteer, you have to make a huge transition to a formal breaking down step-by-step -step teaching and learning. And we found that both for the masters as well as for the younger traditional puppeteers, this was a challenge. And we had to be really conscious of this while we were creating a training program for them. So one of the first uh, things we looked at was the master class model. It was, um, it was there to, to, to read, for example, uh, in one of the publications where uh, Margaret Aniculescu uh, uh, talks about the workshop, the masterclass with Tadus Cantor, for example, where the students were sort of doing these several days of very intense work with one master teacher. Um, there were masterclass models from some of the Chinese masters who had begun to teach in this way. Um, but we felt very much that A, it had to be residential, so that people were not just coming to class thinking they're coming to a class and going away, but really were living with the master puppet, with the, with the traditional master. And it was quite incredible. I have a little video to share. We were in this uh, beautiful house in the hills, in the Himalayas, and there were 12 contemporary artists. They came from the, uh, the field of animation, uh, from theater, from um, school educators, and of course, puppeteers. And then they were with Gundu Rajuji, who's one of the uh, master puppeteers, ninth in the generation of leather shadow puppetry. And each day he would 
um, teach the whole morning and then tell them stories by night till about three in the morning. And this whole immersive experience of just hearing him sing and tell stories and what was quite incredible, a real turning point is um, the urban learners are very uh, used to a certain structured way of learning. But when he went, took them all to the butcher shop in the morning and said, we're going to buy, make our leather. So we are going to buy the skin. So we are going to buy the skin of a freshly slaughtered goat. Everybody was really uh, shocked. And it was unbelievable what started to happen after that. So I'm just going to share a video. I hope everyone can hear this once it starts and see it. We are going to get an advertisement from YouTube probably. So I'm just going to forward that. Yeah, and here we are. Can you all hear it? Is it audible? And see it? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to pause for a minute. The essential model of the workshop is that they learn with the master puppeteer to make leather puppets. Uh, first, they make the leather and the paint and make their own brushes. Then um, the, they learn to do a piece of his performance exactly the way he does it. Um, but there was a possibility. He gave them a possibility to interpret it in their own languages. So we had about eight different Indian languages being spoken during the presentations. And then they had another period of seven or eight days when everybody created their own interpretations of the traditional puppet form as animators or filmmakers or uh, uh, puppeteers or uh, any other kind of performers. So this, these are the projects. <laughs> मैं तो उनका शर्क हूँ मैं मैं इच्छा देने कर सकता हूँ लेकिन वो तो समझ रही थी कहीं भी कहीं भी मैं इनके साथ तो जाना है
Um, one of the key learnings from this workshop was, whoops, sorry, something else has started playing. Um, one of the key learnings from this workshop was in the conversations with the master puppeteer. He said, um, this is the first time I'm breaking down what my father taught me. So he would keep remembering, my father used to say, my grandfather used to say, and um, um, came up with a uh, a pedagogical format to teach his art form for those who were not from his community, which was uh, very important for us in the, the training, uh, the, in developing a training format. And also the second thing that was very interesting for us is when he came to the workshop, um, there was this, he was resigned to the fact that he will be the last generation uh, who would practice this. Um, he came in with his son-in-law, but his own son was, had joined the army. And a few months after the masterclass, he withdrew his son from the army because he felt there's a new audience and a possible um, uh, area of expanding his puppet form beyond his traditional audience. Because with the students, he had created about six little animation films. He was actually in the creation of the films. Um, then he got invited to teach the, the animation school. Um, and it, it really snowballed into something very, very exciting, both for Unima India and for this individual traditional uh, puppeteer. I'm sorry, did you lose me for a second? And my internet is unstable. Anyway, so uh, I have another example. This is String Puppets of Rajasthan. This is uh, Puran Bhatt. Some of you might even know him. This was our second masterclass, second Indian masterclass. I hope we don't get oh, another ad. Okay. Okay, the ad is gone. I should say. We got to buy a plastic case in Margo.
Ranjana, maybe you'd like to speak a little bit about Puran's masterclass, which was our second one. So in this masterclass, what we found that uh, we learned that every master has his own style of teaching and imparting his skill and his tradition to students. And it is really a dynamic response. And what was very exciting in Puran's masterclass was that he was able to share with these students and you saw some of them were from, uh, not from India, they didn't have the same cultural context, but he was able to actually bridge that gap and share the fact that tradition is actually organic and dynamic, it's not static. And it was very clear to the students that the form, the aesthetics, everything subtly keeps responding to the external environment and to the influences which come in. And that the master was happy to acknowledge that, he was happy to share that with the students. And he was, uh, he was in a very comfortable space. He was a master of his art and it is a very difficult craft. The Katputli has no cross. It's just bare strings on just the fingers. And the students uh, did a remarkable job. The master taught well and the students picked it up. So it was a wonderful experience, really immersive, and it strengthened our understanding of what a master class should be like and which master is absolutely ready to, uh, to share a pedagogical structure with his students. After this, we moved on to uh, Anurupa, we moved on to other, uh, yeah. Yep. So we've just talked about this and uh, I'm just gonna share this. We've already spoken about breaking down their own practice, uh, seeing value in someone else's eyes. And uh, we also, the typical structure of a masterclass is that it's between two to three weeks, everybody lives together. Um, there is always a documenter present um, who not just documents a video, uh, but and uh, there's also someone who writes about it, particularly in the traditional master classes, um, writes about discourses that have emerged. And our um, journal, the Unima Journal Sutradhar, and I'll share a copy at the end of this talk uh, and the link to it. Um, each of these sutradhars has been devoted to one of the masterclass processes with somebody writing, the participants writing, the master writing or interviews about the entire experience and, um, and the journey. And these spaces of the traditional master puppeteer teaching have been a huge bridge between the uh, rural uh, master, uh, master puppeteer and the urban practitioner. Um, so the next one was very special because we started also to think about what about the next generation of traditional puppeteers? What about the young people, the ones in India who have to today choose whether they want to continue the family tradition and be puppeteers or be something else? And very often the experience of the family teaches them, no, no, there is no future here. So I will be a banker or, a, 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 or, or do another job. Um, so it was important to get back to the young, uh, young traditional puppeteers between the ages of 18 and 25. And Dadi did a workshop where he looked at traditional practice, but with new material and technique, and to see if something new could emerge uh, without compromising maybe the, the basic aesthetic of the tradition or uh, changing completely what they had grown up with um, and also creating a network of uh, young traditional puppeteers, which is almost missing. And this one workshop had 10 uh, traditional puppeteers. Even today, they continue to have, this was almost eight years ago or nine years ago. They have a network. They talk to each other. Um, they have meetings. They visit each other in completely different states. So I'll share a little video uh, from them, please excuse these ads. Uh, one second, yeah. Now it says it isn't an ad.
का यहाँ है लेकिन खाने के लिए फिर इधर जाना पड़ेगा जगह ये इधर भी जाएगा तो फिर नीचे कैसे So this workshop had uh, uh, string puppeteers, gl uh, glove puppeteers, rod puppeteers, um, and uh, shadow puppeteers from different states of India. Inside, push it in. There's water in it. The glue also comes better. Yeah, Anurupa, I think what we left out was that uh, by now we had worked out that you needed to mentor each individual participant. So right from the first masterclass, besides the documentation, we would have mentors present. So when it was time for each student to participant to create his work and to make uh, decisions about the creative content and uh, uh, make dramaturgical choices, we found that it was really helpful to have a mentor guiding the process and making them just understand the choices at every crossroad there was. And that has been part of the format ever since. Um, we also had three European puppeteers because there was an, uh, we felt the need also to look at dramaturgy, like I was saying right at the beginning, to look at new material, new forms of articulation. And here, uh, we thought it would be interesting to share with you some of the write-ups that emerged from these workshops. So we had um, Alain Liku and Nargis Maj uh, uh, doing a Papier Theatre workshop. And in this, uh, we had uh, Alain and Nargis, of course, share uh, some of their work 
this is a, a PDF version of the Sutradhar and uh, they also shared the work of different forms of uh, Papia theater in uh, practice now in Europe, especially by uh, puppeteers practice it now. Um, these were different groups across India who participated. These are images of some of the things that emerged. One of the strongest uh, elements of the workshop was really looking at one uh, piece of writing and turning it into a performed script, which was, uh, they took um, the performers through really step-by-step by step by step processes uh, by editing words away from it, looking at the central idea, um, then, of course, building uh, the paper pieces. Uh, we had uh, performers from very different backgrounds. These two, uh, one is an actor, one is a drama therapist. Um, we had a filmmaker. This is Kareem, who many of you might know. Kareem was in Afghanistan, was had to leave the country because of the conflict. Um, so this was Kareem, Atul, and also um, an actor uh, from Hyderabad. So there was a filmmaker, an actor, and Kareem essentially comes from a mime uh, background, and they created a performance together. Uh, this is uh, uh, Choiti, who is an object theater artist from India. There was a school teacher and an, uh, a, a performer working with her. Uh, there were designers, a couple of designers and uh, who worked with storytellers. So we had very different outputs. Um, and all the master classes right from the beginning, including uh, the ones which are with traditional masters or they may be with uh, European puppeteers uh, teaching master classes, were all, uh, all of them end in a performance for uh, the public. So the groups prepare things, create things, so, and face the public and have this public dialogue and interface. And that's the same thing which happened with um, this masterclass. Um, and I'm going to share this in the chat. Uh, this has many, many of uh, um, what the participants had to say, what uh, the researchers had to say. Similarly, there was a masterclass with Barbara Colling, who is the director of Helios Theater from Hamm in Germany. And she works with material theater and works with toddlers. Um, this was almost a first introduction, apart from what Acetage India has done to toddlers theater in India. So it was very exciting that this conversation began. Uh, she came back a second time and did a much longer workshop uh, where, um, Many productions have emerged. They are still touring festivals up until the lockdown and uh, COVID. These shows have been touring festivals. In fact, three festivals of toddlers theater have emerged in India because of this um, interface. Um, what was very exciting was for us to learn about almost this new theatrical language, which was material theater, to work with paper, uh, work with sand. Uh, we also had uh, this beautiful museum space uh, to work in. So a lot of the participants could respond to architecture, to the displays in the museum. Ranjana, is there anything I am missing out on the two workshops? Just to point out that uh, uh, over this journey of training and choosing different models for training, uh, what emerged was that we were responding actually to the situation as it was. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a gap in children's theater, in new techniques. And so we thought of bringing in Barbara Colling and introducing this. Uh, we thought that there could be an interface between animators and shadow puppeteers. And by encouraging that uh, confluence, it uh, propelled a lot of new work. And uh, similarly, the lack of uh, dramaturgy in the practice and the training of the young puppeteers, especially in urban areas, is which was striking. And that was a hard journey for this very happy looking group, which was with Irina, she will remember. It was a tough journey for all of them because it is a new discipline to actually engage with the thought process and uh, dive deep into dramaturgy. And so that happened twice over, once with Irina and once with Ala as well. So, and some of the students um, have been uh, 
so gripped by this process and the richness of the experience that they got that they would repeat master classes, which led us to think that um, we need to expand this concept and look at a foundation course. And I will acknowledge Marthi's input in making the first draft of the syllabus for our foundation course. And a just few to uh, show you this image, this is uh, Shamim who did uh, Irina's uh, master class. And he actually created a performance of uh, Gulliver's Travels with this. This was the first draft of his scenography, which uh, happened during that master class. And now, of course, he has a performance which tours. Mm. And this is one of, these are some of the impacts we, yeah. we felt is one, like Ranjana said, awareness of, awareness of dramaturgy, but also building these groups of young people across cities mm. who are still in touch, who then become the people who come into the foundation program, who are also practice, practicing artists or mid-career professionals who start to include more and more puppet theater in their everyday practice. Um, and often end up doing collaborations with puppeteers. Um, uh, so we are finding that puppeteers are now collaborating with animators, with musicians, with dancers, with digital artists, with, um, with writers. Um, and, and there has been sort of a revival of, uh, you know, this notion that puppetry is a dying form, uh, that it's one kind of application only, it's one possibility only. Um, and a lot of work has also begun in applied puppetry, which is, you know, puppetry in education, puppetry in health, puppetry in therapy, et cetera, as well. Um, so one of, the, one of the things with traditional puppet theater, and this is all of these questions over the six masterclasses led to the creation of the foundation program. And some we are still addressing. One is that we have a connect with puppeteers in the West, uh, or even in America or Canada or Australia, but not really in the South and Southeast of Asia, which is where we have very strong historic connections with. Um, and there's a real need to build this. And that's something that uh, we're trying to do with more of this Asia Pacific Commission and conversations with them, because it's critical that this is built up in the future. Um, in fact, the conference in China becomes so critical for us too, because in the region, the conversations have really not happened. They happen with, between maybe maximum two or three countries, but not the region as a whole. And uh, aesthetically and culturally, are we have, we have a lot in common. We have history in common. We have voyages and journeys and trade and so much in common. So that's going to be very key for us in the coming years for Unima India, for the, uh, the training programs here. Uh, to invite masters now from this side and also students possibly and, uh, you know, have a closer exchange. Uh, this is the foundation program and we'll run through this quickly because it will be much nicer to really have a conversation now. So uh, this was very special because two of our students were traditional puppeteers, six of our students were uh, contemporary artists, not puppeteers, except for one who had some puppetry experience. Uh, um, the high point is they actually went and lived in a village of a master puppeteer with him for three weeks. Um, and, and we really saw the students change post that. And uh, every night they could go and watch a traditional performance, not just puppet performances, but dance and theater and um, many different rituals through the night to really understand what the roots are and where the puppeteer is drawing resource from, the story, the ideas, whether it was the temple wall or whether it was from theater, uh, from local regional folk theater or the mask form of the region, which was very, very interesting uh, for us to observe. Uh, we also had a series of lectures by almost all the members of the puppetry community so that a network was being built and the diversity was was present for the uh, students to, to access. Uh, to, it, it was a pool for them to dip into. And we had some um, shows, and I'll share the links with you shortly, of um, very modern, very uh, uh, sort of uh, avant-garde approach to the Ramayan, to working on garbage and, and, and this girl who lives in garbage, and almost this um, story of, uh, 
a child who can't go to school but is is, is creating with garbage and a, and a commentary on society using recycled materials to make puppets. So it was a very interesting outcome for us. I'm just sharing this um, at the moment very sketchily, but uh, we will share this with you. This was our handbook, the foundation course handbook. It might give you a sense of um, the kind of course. There's uh, basically fundamental core concepts, um, orientation, introduction, daily practices, Kalari Payatu, which is uh, martial arts, sketching, sculpting, uh, external ex um, assessors, uh, mentors, uh, puppet building, uh, puppet articulation, mostly tabletop rod puppet, Bunraku-esque, Bunra um, a little bit of string puppetry, lots of shadow puppetry, residency at the village of the master puppeteer, um, mentoring uh, the final shows. These are the students. We'll share these with you. Of course, you'll see them. Some of the teachers, faculty, voice training uh, and lectures included, some amount of animation. So um, we will share this with you. I'm just going to put it in the chat box, maybe while Ranjana talks about some of our future ideas and we will end shortly after that. Yeah, future ideas are actually now leading us to look at our uh, our uh, Indian situation very closely, um, pandemic and its damage notwithstanding, it has probably propelled more damage as it is the traditional uh, puppeteers had been suffering from contextual change from so many pulls and pushes that the younger generation seemed to be drifting apart from the tradition. But now with the pandemic, there was a bad situation, which I think all of you can well imagine. Particular forms have suffered even more. Glove puppetry has practically vanished. And so we really thought that to propel uh, a revival in the area of glove puppetry, that is the next masterclass that we should really have. We should not give up reaching out to the younger generation of the tra traditional puppeteers because there was so much excitement in those 10 students who came from different parts of the country, from different traditions. Their excitement in uh, exploring new avenues, new techniques, new materials, finding a network, finding a community amongst themselves, that that is definitely a success story which you would like to repeat. So an inclusive foundation course is definitely the way we are going to go. We are already planning the next one, but and the master classes um, and workshops with um, the traditional puppeteers, the younger generation. But at the same time, we would like to uh, explore a new model which takes the online platform into account, pulls in a faculty from everywhere in the world and we have seen so many successful uh, workshops online in the last two years. All of us have experienced them. Uh, what we are doing right now is an example. And so perhaps build in a model in which there are online lectures, which are open to all. The residency with the traditional puppeteer is definitely going to feature in it. And then we can have also take into account the fact that a lot of the puppeteers who are joining or participants who will join are perhaps earning their living side by side. And so you need to have a model which allows them space for that. So it might be stretched and spread over a year and a half. We are mulling over it and hope that we will come up with a good plan in a few months and that uh, all the inspiration from the various programs that we see and all the inspiration that we get from uh, so many of uh, the programs around the world will help us to consolidate it. Anupa, have I covered it all? So this is the website uh, and I'll also share it in the chat, which has uh, the journal, a lot of the videos, the handbook of the foundation program, and uh much more that's why i should stop here uh, and if there are any questions 
Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Anurupa and Renjana. The, the, the work that you have done and you do, it's amazing. It's amazing because you have so rich, uh, so, so, so rich quality and quantity of different forms in traditional uh, in India. And this is amazing. What you have presented is it's amazing reality. What do you are doing there? So thank you. Thank you very much. And for everybody here, um, as you know, Puppet Training is this program where we want to, to have a more close the relation between um, people who, who, who show their programs and, and other interested in it. So if you could uh, please uh, ask some questions to Anurupa and to Ranjana, please raise your hand, just only. Marth, please. Oh, thank you, Anurupa and Ranjana. This was very precious. And uh, we can see very well the extent of your work uh, in India. It's fantastic. But I was wondering, um, in the con contemporary forms that are starting to emerge, uh, you said, Ranjana, before that, were, that there were maybe 50 puppeteers interested in contemporary work. Um, I was wondering if there are some others, people that write for puppets that emerge, that, that are, are starting to uh, be interested or make some uh, productions or... I, I think, Marty, the number is growing. Okay. Even though we've had a setback, but the community is growing not just across puppeteers, but across the theater and the performance art community. And a lot of young theaters have been taking interest. And I have to say that uh, the work that Anurupa has been doing personally as Katkatha has uh, really given a big dynamic push to this uh, spread of the word and the, you know, if we can just infect people with the passion for puppetry, just mm -hmm. inspire them. And once they experience it, I'm sure that they will always have it at the back of their minds that, you know, here is something that I can go back to. So it's a question of putting it out there. And I've always been amazed by when we put out a call for applications, there's always a moment when you think, oh my God, now there's going to be silence. <laughs> but uh, it starts and it starts trickling in. And uh, in the beginning, we were making phone calls and we were you know, spreading the word, word of mouth. But I think now uh, we don't have to so much. Yeah, the last two master classes we had waiting lists. Uh, we had four or five people in a waiting list. So it was, that's one. The other is when you ask about writers, we've actually got two kinds of writers who have emerged because we have had this researcher writer in the master classes. And in puppetry research, we've always had very anthropological research in India. The research has always been about oh, the size of the puppet and the content of the show and the 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 um, you know the socioeconomic backgrounds of the puppeteers. It's a uh, it's too uh, sort of um, one sided and comes from a social scientist and not from a performer or from a performing arts practitioner. In the recent times, what has been very interesting is because we have had documenters and researchers from a pedagogic perspective. Uh, or from um, research of art, performing arts perspective, we've got about six new writers who are now writing about puppet theater in a very different way, not oh. just anthropologically, but uh, writing about the performance itself or the ways that performances need to be recorded. So that's one really exciting thing uh, because when Barbara came back to do um, a mentorship program with us, uh, we had eight theater companies across India who applied for it. And um, we had a pedagogue who works as the head of a theater department in the theater and education program in a school in uh, India, who um, did daily interviews and uh, really did an extensive research on the impact of the shows on children and on the uh, practitioners themselves who previously had never performed for children or had performed for children, but the shows were 
may be somewhat didactic or had performed beautiful, very aesthetic shows, but this time were very mindful of the fact that they were toddlers. Mm. So, you know, the kind of uh, impact this kind of uh, new uh, approach had. Uh, so that's been interesting. Plus, we had a, a mentorship program uh, where uh, Sylvie was Sylvie Bayon was working with writers, and these were first-time writers for puppet theater. They were writers of novels, writers of plays, writers of you know actors' theater, etc. Who came in and uh, collaborated with a puppet theater company. So we got we have now a pool of about four writers to come back to write for puppet if we want them again and any of the puppet theater companies would sort of um, sort of uh, access this resource. So yes, it's building very, very slowly, but it's beginning to happen. The other really interesting thing we have is now filmmakers were very interested in documenting puppet theater because they were documenting the master classes and it's no longer, okay, my camera is going to shoot the, uh, you know, the form and the close-ups of only the puppet, but really looking at the story of who the puppeteer is or why he or she chooses to be a puppeteer and what is this traditional practice? How does this person engage with space in the community and with the audience? So those have been very interesting sort of outcomes of the master programs apart from- Yeah, one can see concrete outcomes. And actually I can count four filmmakers who have uh, seriously uh, gone into puppetry as, as a subject. You know, They've documented, they've made wonderful films and uh, in fact, uh, um, I think you could almost have a film festival around it. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. So another question. Yes, I have another one. Uh, mother, Marty, s'il te plaît. Yes, um, I was wondering, uh, uh, Hanjana and uh, Nurupa, uh, when uh, we saw some of the small films you uh, you showed us, there were some um, women, girls in the workshops. I was wondering, in traditionally uh, in the Indian uh, uh, puppetry world, were there any uh, women masters? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is, uh, for example, a traditional form, no kuvidya, that I spoke about, was only performed by women. And uh, uh, unfortunately, no, there are not too many left. And one of them just received the highest civilian, the third highest civilian award of uh, the country recently, because she continues to teach the young women of her community and her granddaughter is now practicing. So there are forms which are only practiced by women. There are forms where the, the female characters will be play, played by females and the male characters will be made, played by males, like the large leather shadow puppets from Andhra Pradesh. There are also um, within the puppetry performance, the master singer who will not perform with the puppet because they are the orators of the show, a little bit like in the Bunraku theater. Mm -hmm. And the master singer or orator of the show is high, you know, is a completely separate person in the traditional performance. So the player will be different, the builder will be different, and the orator would be different typically. Um, of course, in some of the forms, all three have come together. Uh, and in these um, situations, there were special women singers who were considered master performers. And um, a company who had really good singers ha always had an edge over the other companies because um, the uh, in the traditional puppet theater, especially shadow puppetry, the main thing is the story. The, the center of everything is the narrative. The puppets are more illustrative. Um, in, in string puppets, for example, the master puppet theater would, would do 20 voices. So that puppeteer, and it's always men, that puppeteer would become very, very important. I mean, that, that performer would become very important because without that voice, the company just loses its voice mm -hmm. in a performance. Um, yeah, but in, in glove puppets, traditionally in Kerala, it was women performing, uh, men and women together performing. So it was one man and one woman. But the revived form, which you see now as Pava Kathakali is only male performers 
So it's very mixed uh, here. Thank you. Uh, one question, Anurupa, you said that um, in some part there is some kind of technique with the, with the nodes? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, let me see if I can pull up a video. It's called Noku Vidya. Noku is the nose. And it's, uh, uh, this is only, like I was saying, only performed by uh, women. And um, uh, it's it's interesting because there is not a very long script or anything, but maybe I can just pop up a video and show you now and send you the longer one later. You will bear with me because YouTube is still showing me ads, but. The goodness of avocado. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, and now. So typically, oh. yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> typically, typically, really small scenes like um, th these two men with uh, the two women threshing or uh, someone catching a fish, someone cutting a tree. So it would just be little scenes and not really too much of a story. But I've heard that this is Panjaka Lakshmi who uh, who's recently won uh, th this award. Um, she uh, does tell some stories, possibly because there's a lot of renewed interest in the show. We don't know what it was like really maybe three generations ago, but these forms keep changing. So were they just little side shows or, or uh, I mean, were they always stories is something that would be interesting to research more. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Irina? Um, I don't have a question right now, but I want to congratulate you, Anurupa and uh, Ranjana, for the incredible project, incredible work. I'm really very impressed by the originality of your approach, the depth. Um, putting together people from all generations and uh, trying to bring together contemporary artists with traditional artists uh, so that they can enrich each other. It, it is an incredible work you are doing, mm. really. I am very, very impressed. Mm. In a way, in despite of your enormous efforts and, and lack of funding and all your giant work, I think that having uh, the freedom of not having an institutional rigid structure, it's a big <laughs> advantage. Yes, yeah. yes, I it agree. Is, <laughs> I agree. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thank please. you very much for your appreciation. Amazing, amazing work you you, you do. Amazing, amazing. It's an example for for all the countries. Yeah, incredible. Um, another question, a little question to Anurupa. You said that in in one another part. Um, yes, uh, Gianni Young said profoundly inspiring. Yes your work, it's really inspiring for many of us. Um, Anurupa, you said that um, in, in one part of India, the puppeteers play with a little, little figures. It's something, yes, and, yes. And, and the space, the space is, is little, it's like a box. It's, yeah. 
it's like a small platform. It's a, it's a, so, yeah. and you know that in, in South America, um, in Brazil, mainly in Brazil, there is a, a, a little lambe lambe, we call lambe lambe, the, this technique, right. because it's, it's, it's nearly the same. It's a little box and little figures oh. that uh, just one to one, uh, one spectator and one puppeteer. And when in this case, um, the puppeteers play with these little figures in front of which, uh, how much uh, spectators. I think typically ah, they uh, be playing, yeah, in in a village square or even in a in a feast, and so there would be children gathering. There would be a lot of people around them. So it's not a one to one because I think that uh, privacy of space is uh, it's it's just out there in the open. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Irina, please. Um, I want to ask, do you have demands now um, from people um, who ask you what they would like to learn? Did you hear me? Um, Irina, you mean like, uh, oh. Yeah, do you mean like a, a request for a specific yes, training? Yes, yes, now that you did it for quite a few years and uh, yeah. you are in a certain uh, world to be known, organizing these courses, do you get the uh, requests, yeah? Anurupa? You do get requests, but uh, they are, you know, from individuals. It's not yeah. institutional. Yeah. So there is there is an interest which is generated, and I think we are now on the brink of uh, of a revival of interest because it seems that the world over the pandemic is slowing down, and that everyone can look forward to uh, a sense of normalcy. People are able to plan. And so now the real test is going to be now, this year. Yes. I will just share for whoever is interested in the chat, a little video of the small Chadur Badur puppets also. Ooh. Oh, Chaza brother. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, Tito, you can look at it and see if it is a lot like Lambe Lambe. Uh, we can yes, see the, the video. It's on a pause. Yeah, tiny little box. Okay, 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 no, thank you, thank you. You can't see it? I, I just share it. Yeah. Okay. I think okay. my internet is just horrible. You know, somebody wants to see a video of the nose puppetry, so you can share the link, Anurupa. Okay, I tried it. thank you. I tried it, it's very difficult. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you see- You must uh, have a, a big nose. <laughs> we have you just have got- have a very strong neck because you're, uh, holding it like this. Exactly. Ooh. We have this kind of figures in uh, Canada, in Quebec, but uh, uh, they are not used as puppets. You know, they are used for the wind. Uh, the wind oh, uh, yes. moves them. So oh. there are quite different types of sculptures of uh, people, oh, of yes. um, characters, but the, and they looking very, very much like what you showed us, but wow. they are not puppets, yes. Yes, it's yeah. interesting. So I've also shared the link to no Link, yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, there is another another question, another comment. Stefano.
to say to say yes okay this is very very interesting your your job and the, the variety of the different forms for very old tradition my question is uh, i have a little school in italy from 2021 20, year and we work um, about um, learning of uh, traditional and ancient uh, techniques and languages so we learn to, to learn to um, create puppets uh, from hand tradition burattini but in wood but in wood hmm? wood and uh, and come si dice vestiti custom custom yes, yes. Custom and uh, hands, little hands. We we want the, our students learn all um, together construction, traditional construction, and uh, traditional animation. Uh, we study the grammar, the grammar of the manipulation hmm? mm -hmm. uh, from the hands to the puppets. So. We work about also the object, uh, modern uh, theater of object and, uh, and uh, different uh, techniques. But for us, it's very, very important, the hand puppets and very traditional form of uh, movement and, and uh, manipulation and text also, and text. Uh, my question is, you have, uh, um, you have uh, the masters um, open, uh, for example, to exchange uh, Italian in, in India or Indians uh, in Italy. I've, I think in the future, I, 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 I would like very, very well to change and, uh, and, um, uh, uh, Tito, um, interchange, interchange uh, between See, professors, uh, 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 students. Uh, uh, Yes, yes, and 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 the show uh, show similitude uh, about and, uh, this tradition. Exactly, I think it's it's a wonderful thought, and I'm glad it's inspired you to think of exchange already. I thought that would be the next step, but we are already <laughs> there. How yes. many? How, how many? How yes, many so day? Uh, one of your master class normally one week, two, two weeks, two, 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 three weeks. Sometimes two weeks, sometimes three weeks. Yes. Also, uh, what is very exciting is now with uh, what we tried with the foundation program, it's uh, one thing to invite the master to the city and the students come to the city, but it's another world when everybody goes and lives with the master in his uh, village and they really get a sense of uh, the space. And that I think will be also very exciting for, from, for students from anywhere in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and mm -hmm. that kind of exchange would be very exciting. Mm -hmm. The other thing that, uh, that uh, Stefano, what, you, what you're saying uh, really excites us is, we almost did this before the lockdown, but then of course, everything was locked is we started to do a shadow puppet. I'm sorry, my internet seems really horrible. Maybe I'll switch my camera off. We started to do a shadow puppet tour of India, uh, which was you go from one master, their village to the next, to the next, to the next. And you stay, can you hear me? Did you lose yes. me? Yes, 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 no, sorry. We hear you. Yeah. You hear me. So we, we started to do these tours where you could stay in the village of uh, one type of uh, puppet form, watch a show in the night, have um, a, a little lunch with the family, see their puppets, um, stay a couple of days, go and see the historic sites which are related to puppet theater. Then you go to the next place. And we were going to do this as a masterclass so that yeah. the traditional shadow puppets look so different from each other. If you yeah. go to Kerala and you travel 110 kilometers and the puppet changes, and you travel another 200 puppet kilometers and the puppet and the stories have changed. So um, to even do something like that would be possible with students from across the world. I will come. 
<laughs> me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. You're always welcome. Me too. I'm also coming. I love it. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Kurshid, you have a question. You are mute, Kurshid. Uh, you are mute. Oh, we can hear you. No. So we cannot. Till Kurshid comes back. Stefano, that is my Pulcinella. Hassan, you are hearing me? Yes. Yes. Anupama, madam, inspiring uh, not only the uh, traditional puppets uh, artist, uh, she is inspiring to us, sir. I'm a teacher, school teacher, and our uh, schools, they're using the puppets, uh, gloves puppets, shadow puppets for, a, uh, for the progress for the uh, students in education sectors. And uh, uh, thank you for Anupama, madam. She is always inspiring to us, teachers <laughs> also too to using this, so I'm telling here. Yes, yes, very impact and very um, effective uh, teaching it's the puppets are. I'm not a tra traditional artist, sir, but I'm a, one of the traditional teacher to using this tra tra traditional puppets for our uh, students. So I'm uh, very, very thanks to Anupama Madam Charles and all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kursiv. Okay. Is there another? Oh, and and drunkers. Hello, Anne. How are you? You are mute. Hello. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, I've. Uh, found it a very interesting presentation and beautiful work. I was wondering how you reach all these people who want to participate in the education in such a big country. And as well, the, the traditional puppeteers as the comp uh, contemporary. I was wondering, how do you reach them? It's, it's a very good question. question. Uh, because for us, reaching out has always been very, very challenging. Like I was telling you, for even for Unima as, as, a, as a group for us, to really reach out to everybody who is in India is impossible. I mean, mm -hmm. just to give you an example, every third or fourth day we discover someone else is using puppets in some part of the country, which nobody knew anything about, or you discover there's a traditional form which is still alive. Um, so this, this happens constantly. I think it's because of the collective Mm, people talk to each other and share a lot. And I think that's one of the best things about puppeteers across the world. I think we are a sharing community. We don't uh, keep information to ourselves. So I think there's a lot of, uh, uh, when you know there's something happening, because there are so few of us as puppeteers in, in a 1.4 billion people country, um, news is take, carried by the puppetry community very fast. And I must say now with uh, um, the internet, even the very, very traditional puppeteers are on the internet, which is uh, on, on all these digital platforms, which has been uh, a very big thing for us. Because for example, when we were communicating through emails, we never had the kind of response in Unima India that we do have with Facebook or Instagram uh, or WhatsApp, uh, just our uh, uh, Unima India WhatsApp group has 51 members who are constantly sharing with each other. Um, and I think the news of something like a workshop or a masterclass then carries um, quite fast. Now what is happening is that we have this alumni, you know, so we had 12, sometimes 14 people in each masterclass and eight foundation students who are now professional puppeteers and all their circles sort of tell each other that something is happening. Uh, so that's really helped. 
but what for us is a big test and and, and has been a really big big um uh, step not a very big step yet but a step is the percentage of puppeteers from a traditional forms from many different traditional forms is increasing in unima india which means that if we send out a poster for a master class or a, a tra trailer we are getting applicants from the traditional puppeteers earlier it meant you know really calling people of meeting them face to face um but now uh, actually informing them uh, one group of people you meet it means the message spreads very quickly so that's quite heartening uh it's a long way to go it's a very long way to go before we can say that we reach the entire puppetry community it's not going to happen uh, uh in a, in a hurry challenge, but at least it's a start yeah the other challenge we have is that it's a multi multilingual community oh, and yeah. everybody doesn't speak the same language so uh, in fact that is a challenge even during the master class and the foundation uh, courses that we have to make sure that the mentors cover certain language groups otherwise there are big gaps in people's understanding of what is happening in the class so uh, that is a challenge as well but i think puppetry is also a beautiful language everyone can speak so that's maybe a start <laughs> in the beginning but yeah yeah understand yeah. absolutely <laughs> thank you thank for you. The answering thank, thank you. you thank you very much uh, yani hi hi i i just wanted to ask about how are you coping with the manpower requirements of having a mentor per student um, because it's a very interesting uh, course, everything that you've set up, and we're trying to start something that's a little similar here in South Africa. So I'm very interested in how you're coping with that. Having enough people who are experts, pairing them up correctly with the kind of mm. students, um, finding a good match, because it's not just anybody that can mentor anybody. So how are um, you coping with that? It's a difficult one. Uh, I think uh the the big challenge always is uh the match of course as you said the other thing is the men mentors are often people with very very busy lives and then the students suddenly need something and the mentors traveling with the show or something like that those are uh very big challenges the other thing is uh, um we are actually uh beginning to develop a conversation about who is a mentor because is it a person who gives you their view but when does it become an imposition uh will it then uh, enable the student to invent uh or is it someone who is just uh facilitating from a distance by giving examples and showing some videos and giving reading material this has always been an up and down and a part of a huge very big discussion because before the next foundation program we realized ranjana and i were mentoring the students in the first one uh we weren't we were only teaching very small parts of the course for that reason but in the second one we are now thinking of inviting some of the students to come back and mentor and to look at um maybe not just puppeteers who could mentor maybe to look at um theater practitioners dance practitioners writers to mentor puppeteers so to to expand the field a little bit uh but yes it's it's a constant question and we were constantly challenged because what is it that the faculty is answering when there's a teacher for let's say puppet making and then there's a student who's like i just cannot do this uh do you bring the mentor into interface between the faculty and the student you know there were these questions as well so there's a lot of this this question of at which point does the mentor come in and really what is the job of the mentor and i think ranjana and i have had lots of debates while we were men and discussions while we were mentoring and then we had a much bigger discussion on who the mentor is when we did the assessments of the foundation program so yeah i don't have a concrete answer but the only yeah. thing we have learned is if you can a... find if you find solutions to share with us <laughs> thank you searching and learning together and well uh, i'm just so interested to hear because it's you know uh 
when, when well I find myself dreaming up solutions to problems somewhat in isolation so it's so I've always found that mentoring is one of the keys to supporting groups um, to be able to take a, a bigger step but that challenge of finding the right mentor and then supporting the mentor adequately so that they're able to stay in and stay connected and what do you you know what do you provide to be able to keep that engagement at the level that it needs to be yeah it's just really interesting to hear what you're struggling with and how many parallels there are um so thank you for for sharing about that maybe we have more discussions off <laughs> offline yeah. about your structure thank you i think one of the things that i could really share is found it very useful to have the mentor in the process from the beginning until the end. Uh, because the student is really doing an entire journey. And the mentor really, it feels like the mentor, uh, the faculty can come and go, or the lecturers can come and go. But the mentor really needs to be someone who's sort of um, co-journeying with the student. Yeah, it's, it's a wide issue the job of the of the mentor because so your mentors are there all the time every day during the program all the time um no they were not there all the time but they were they came back very periodically so maybe three yes. days of the week uh and also some of the critical junctions like when we shifted from one faculty to another so when we did the first big shift we did was when they went away from New Delhi to live with the master puppeteer in the south of India. Uh, uh, I traveled with the students, but then I didn't stay. I went back uh, almost 10 days later because it just felt like it was important to leave them with this master puppeteer to make their own experience. Um, so there were these critical decisions uh, of when to not stay as a mentor and when to stay as a mentor. Yeah, uh, I I felt that uh, a lot of the a lot of the work that I was doing as a mentor often was motivating uh, motivating the student through their difficult times because you know there are creative arcs and there are lows and there are highs and. Um, um, and each one of them, because it's residential, they're out of their comfort zone. And some of them are out of their comfort zone away from home for the first time. We had a traditional puppeteer from Kerala who had never been in a cold climate. And he was in Delhi in the month of January and it can be very cold. So, you know, it is even issues like that, which would fall in your lap and you would have to do a little bit of hand holding, and the difficult spots, of course, are when uh, when uh, you throw in the towel. When the mentor would like to throw in the towel as well, and that's when Janine, what you're saying is the support is necessary. So, intra mentor support is also something to look at. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Well, um, we are, I think, maybe in time to, to close our meeting, but if there are any other question, other comments, some of some want to, to say something. Okay, okay. Well, just for, for close this wonderful, wonderful, a meeting and just to, um, to 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 say that uh, our our next meeting will be with the uh, Damu from Prague, <laughs> and uh, we will continue with with other training programs. And um, I want to really uh, deeply thanks Anurupa and Ranjana, uh, not only for the work you, you you do, but also for the generosity of your your explanation today. So thank you very much. And thank you everybody to be here. Uh, we from the commission, we will communicate with you uh, in for the next meetings that we will have. So thank you very much. And uh, well, 
our prayer. Uh -huh. Our uh, prayer for for so peace. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Bye -bye. Um, Thank peace you so for much. Peace Bye bye. Peace bye. to the world. No, no, I have my uh, Pulcinella. My glove puppet to say hello to you. I have my Pulcinella. He misses Italy. This is the puppet from my. Ah, uh, super. <laughs> Fantolino, <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, bene. <laughs> oh. Oh. Arrivederci. 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 We, we, we must start the performance now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ciao, okay. Tito. Ciao, ciao, Caro. Ciao. Bye, bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Marie, Kirina, Mark, Nina. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Jenny. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Hello.